Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and behind me is a brand new CAF Urbus tram for Parramatta Light Rail. And it's at the Yalamundi stop, which in a former life was Rydalmere Station. This is the first of 13 CAF Urbus 100 light rail vehicles that will operate on the Parramatta Light Rail between Carlingford and Westmead. This model of tram is used on the L1 Dulwich Hill Line, the Newcastle Light Rail and also on the Canberra Light Rail. And although they look similar, these new CAF Urbus trams have a number of new and upgraded features and I'll reveal these to you shortly. And they are also longer, with 7 articulated modules rather than 5, which makes these trams around 45 metres long. Here is a view of the 7 modules. Notice how they vary in length and that some have bogies whilst others don't. Each tram can carry up to 400 passengers, which is the equivalent of 6 buses. Now as you've probably guessed I'm on the wrong side of the hoardings and that's because I've had a special invitation from Parramatta Light Rail to have a look inside. But before I go in, notice the double doors at the cab end. Earlier models had single doors, so this is quite a major change. And as you would expect for any new light or heavy rail system, there is level boarding. And to the moment I have the whole tram to myself, which is really really cool. I feel very very special. The cab modules have 14 seats, 10 of which are facing with 4 being longitudinal. All the seats are over wheel arches, with the bogies below being motorised. Now looking the other way, this is the same seating configuration as the cab modules on the earlier Urbus 100 trams. These are known as C modules, with the C standing for cab. Now through the gangway and into one of the S modules. S stands for suspended, which means that the module has no bogies and is instead suspended between the bogied modules on either side. The lack of wheel arches and bogies means additional space, making this ideal for wheelchairs and prams. The wheelchair space comes with a padded vertical support, seat belts and two tip-up seats for use by other passengers. The tip-up seats also make it clear that this is a wheelchair area and that passengers using these seats may need to vacate them. So besides your standard wheelchair space, there's also space for bikes, which I really like. And it comes with something to lock your bike to and tip-up seats for use by other passengers. With bike paths following a good chunk of the Parramatta light rail, it is wonderful to see bicycle spaces included in these vehicles. And there are signs for the wheelchair and bicycle areas on the relevant doors. Besides the five tip-up seats, there are also two facing seats and one longitudinal seat at each end. This module also has two sets of doors, compared to one for the equivalent module on the earlier CAF Urbus trams, so that will mean easier access especially for people with prams and wheelchairs. The wheelchair space on earlier models is similar, but it's between the door and the gangway connection. Here is one of these single longitudinal seats that are next to the gangway on these S modules. Now entering the third module, and like the cab modules, this has the wheel arches with the bogies underneath. It has 14 seats, and the seating configuration is exactly the same as the cab module, with 10 facing seats and 4 longitudinal ones. This module doesn't have any doors and it's the only M module, with M standing for motor, as the bogies are powered. Now heading into the fourth module, and this is the second of three suspended S modules, and this differs from the first one by having seats instead of wheelchair and bicycle spaces. It has two sets of doors, and between these doors are four longitudinal seats on either side. Priority seats, which are close to doors, have the same red maquette that is used on earlier models of these CAF trams. Like the first S module, this one also has a single longitudinal seat at each end, so that's 12 seats in total. Now coming into the fifth module, known as the R module, and there is only one of these per tram. And above the wheel arches are 16 facing seats, no longitudinal seats in this module and no doors either. The bogies on this module are not powered, which may explain the different seat configuration to the M module. And it is the module that contains the pantograph. This is the third of the suspended S modules, and it's exactly the same as the second module, and that means that there are two wheelchair spaces per tram. And then finally, the other cab module, which is identical to the one at the other end. A couple of other things I noticed included the grey floor, which is blue in earlier models. And the wheel arch covers below the seats are now white as opposed to blue. And the seat maquette has been updated too. This tram is currently powered by a generator that's keeping the lights on and showing the on-train displays as well. And that's because the overhead wires are currently being installed, and at the moment they are only on the southbound line. There are plenty of information displays, and these more modern ones are a big improvement on the older dot matrix displays used on earlier versions of these trams. 
The displays are by the gangways that connect the modules together and also at the end of the vehicle, close to the cab. The external displays have the information shown in a white font, so it's easier to read from the outside. On the doors, you have your standard push buttons for opening. And the doors will close automatically after a few seconds. These vehicles are air conditioned as you would expect, with some windows that can be opened in the event of a power or aircon failure. Time for a look in the cab. These are the CCTV monitors to check platforms before departing, and I reckon the cameras are on each side of the cab. This black device monitors the driver and will pick up micro sleeps, mobile phone usage, and other distractions. I was tempted to push this forward, but it's not going to go anywhere without the overhead wires. So this is what I've learnt so far during my brief driver training session. <coughs> Parramatta Light Rail will have two wire free sections and these are shown in purple on this map. And for this to work, each tram will be equipped with the GreenTech onboard energy storage system, which I'll call OESS from now on, with lithium batteries installed on top of the trams. These batteries haven't been installed as yet, but they will be placed within these raised areas on the roof. On this Newcastle light rail vehicle, you can see these batteries on the roof above the cab modules at both ends. When the pantograph is raised for the wire sections, the OESS batteries will be recharged at the same time. And lowering the pantograph automatically activates the batteries for the next wire free section. Charging facilities will be provided at the Westmead Terminus, but not using overhead wires or a charging station like on the Newcastle Light Rail. Instead, the OESS batteries will be charged using a ground-based electricity supply, which I guess will be within the track bed. So that requires a collector shoe, and these might be the two buttons that lower or raise this collector shoe manually. However, there will also be a process to do this automatically. And this is one of the collector shoe reminder signs at the Westmead stop. One collector shoe will be under the M module, with the other one under the R module, which is the same module that has the pantograph, which is currently still in its packaging. So I've been talking to some people from CAF and from Parramatta Light Rail, and what they're saying is that test running is likely to be in the middle of next year, so 2023, with the line opening to passengers in May 2024. The line diagrams are already in place, as you can see here. This was all filmed on Monday the 12th of December 2022, and the day after, this vehicle was moved into storage, where it will stay until the maintenance facility has been completed. I would really like to thank Parramatta Light Rail for inviting me along, so that I could see this new tram and show it to you all as well, and also to the CAF and Parramatta Light Rail staff that showed me around and answered my many questions. So that was the new CAF Urbis tram for Parramatta Light Rail. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do give it a like, give it a thumbs up, do leave a comment or question below, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next video soon. Bye for now.